living in Palermo around the turn of the century, he was, I mean, if you say Palermo to people today, uh, they, they sort of think, really, Palermo? But uh, when Foco was young, it was a very beautiful city, and it was considered one of the destinations on the Grand Tour. If you were on a yacht going around the Mediterranean, you'd definitely stop in Palermo. And the King of England had visited, kings of England, uh, the czars of Russia had been there, and anyone who was anybody on the tour had stopped there. And uh, so he was, he was lucky to grow up in Palermo at a time when it was really beautiful. It was a beautiful city. Anyway, that was his youth. And then um, in 1925, when he met Chanel, she invited him to come to uh, Paris. And all you have to do is tell people about Paris in the 20s, and that's when you want to be in Paris. Uh, he didn't plan that, but that's what happened. And then he lived there for eight years. And this was, this was when Paris really was... You know, the arts were booming. Um, it was at it was between the wars. Paris between the wars is considered you know the best time to be in Paris. He left Paris in 1934 and came to New York. New York uh, was the most exciting city in America, and it was just coming out of the depression, so things were on the upswing. He went out to Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood was the um, was the outward sign of what was going on in America. The films were reintroducing glamour. Uh, they were, uh, the film studios were supporting the idea of glamour by uh, encouraging the movie stars to use uh, exotic and expensive motor cars, and they were helping them buy them so they could be seen driving them. The same thing with jewelry. I don't know how it worked, but they obviously helped the stars finance the jewelry. Anyway, so he was in Hollywood uh, in the late 30s, um, and he opened his business in New York in 1939, uh, September 1, the day the Germans invaded Poland, and uh, good time not to be in Europe. And uh, he was here in New York, and he opened his business, and he was really an instant success. Uh, his, uh, his career was off and running, uh, and then for the next 25, 30 years, he was the probably the go-to important private jeweler in New York. He didn't care about letting you know, but the word of mouth got out there and his clients were Mellon, Whitney, Astor, Rockefeller, just about everybody you could think of who was somebody. And then, of course, all the movie stars. And, uh, you know, people are very impressed when movie stars wear your jewelry.